Welcome to this management science tutorial. Our aim is to have a look at probabilistic models for decision making. We are going to look at some quality control challenges and we will determine some service levels. The challenge we will look at first is the production of microchips. So we are going to assume that microchips are delivered in batches of four. A microchip is defective with a probability of 20% and uh, we are going to have a look at a couple of probabilities and make a decision whether we are going to change the production process. So we know from the very beginning that a microchip is defective with a probability of 20%. Good, so we start Excel and the probability of a microchip being defective is 20%. That obviously means of it not being defective is 1 minus 20%. Um, I'm going to name this cell as P. So here on the top you can just write P, press enter, and now P is known. So if I write equals P, so we know that variable now. So we can immediately use that to have that in a formula, 1 minus p, say 3%. Good. Uh, our task is, what is the probability of it not being defect at all? Which can be done quite easily uh, by just multiplying the likeliness of it of one microchip being defective times 4 because the size of the batch is 4. So let's just say the size of the batch is 4. Let's call that a cell n. So if I go to this cell, call that q, and this one is p, q, n. So we can use that now in cells. So that's the same as fixing a cell. Good. So no defect is just p multiplied by itself four times. So p to the power of four. That's the probability of having no defective microchip in a batch of four. Good. To be more general we need to figure out what are the combinations. So in fact this brings us immediately back to decision trees. Uh, okay, if we just quickly show you a decision tree. Um, so here at the root then there's the possibility of it being defective and not being defective. and that leads us to the next node and this is how it spreads out so uh, obviously we should resize it a little bit otherwise we run out of space immediately So, defective, not defective, probability of 0.2 and, uh, whoops, the, op the opposite, obviously, 0.8, opposite, complement, 0.8. Good. So this one is just going to replicate Okay, uh, let me copy that graph Copy, paste 
copy and paste. Obviously I have to do that for all of them so that you see the tree quickly grows quite in size. Okay, just to give you an idea, so if I go to that end node, so one microchip added, second, third, fourth, probability of it being defective, not defective, not defective, uh, defective is 0.2 times 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.2. So how do we get all the possible combinations of defective and not defective just by using the binomial distribution or the combinations. Okay, so let's have a look at defective, number of defective microchips. <coughs> so, none is defective, one microchip is defective, and so on, up to a maximum of four defective microchips. That's the total amount in the in the batch. Okay, the combinations. So if we don't know the function, we can just press the F and say, okay, we are looking for something which has to do with combinations and immediately we find combine and we get a simple description number of combinations for a given number of items okay number of our given items is n we have four items and number chosen uh, we actually have no defective item in the beginning and here we are so we just propagate that formula and we see the binomial distribution um, Obviously there's the binomial distribution with the probability P and Q immediately in there but we are going to do it manually so we just say uh, P to the power of uh, R, let's call R these numbers, this column and Q to the power of well, one is defective then the other ones are not defective N minus R Uh, that's actually not a nice display. You can actually insert an equation as well in, into Excel. So, um, insert an equation. Since we are using that quite often, I'll just put that to the, to the quick access toolbar, which is up here. And now I can write p to the power of r in a much nicer way. P to the power of r looks a bit better and q to the power of n minus r uh, again equation script q to the power of n minus r oops what happened here n minus r. Here we go. And obviously the whole part is just what we had here. So multiplying everything together. So combinations, they are usually abbreviated with um, n over r. So I need some brackets and I need a matrix. Um, okay, the other way around. Uh, matrix and n over n the number of items and the number of elements in the combination. Good. So that's this one and now 
we've got it all together multiplied Just moving that bit away, make some space. Sorry for the mess. Here we go. Um, good. So, p to the. This is nothing else than p to the power of r, which varies. <coughs> um, didn't want to have the symbol in there actually. Again, then q to the power of n minus r, so q to the power of n minus r is this one. Yep. So we immediately see there's a very high probability, 41%. Okay. Good. Uh, and the complete stuff is just multiplying it all together. Multiply combinations with the probability of defective and not defective. Gives us the probability of having no defective microchip. Probability of having one. Uh, defective microchip. Percentage makes it easier to read, also changes a bit the meaning of probability. Um, anyway, check whether this actually adds up all to one. Sum of all that must be one, and indeed it is one. Good. <coughs> so, can we answer the questions? No defective microchip, probability 41%. One microchip, exactly one microchip is defective, 41%. Two, three or four microchips are defective, all that together is 18.1%. If more than 10% of the batches have more than one defective microchip, well we do know now that 18.1% are defective, which we can see immediately here in the status bar in the sum. So as soon as you select something, it sums up. Uh, we see that we expect 18.1% of the batches being defective and our service level, which we would like to achieve is 10% of batches is only defective. So we need to change the production. So more than 10% are defective. That means production must be changed. Good. This concludes our first uh, our first challenge, which is the quality control.